We are finally taking a look at my Mac Pro 2008. Now, this has been one of my most requested videos. Every single one of you wants to know what's happening with the Mac Pro. And as an answer to all of the questions that I receive through comments, messages, emails, whatever, I have not looked at the Mac Pro. The last time I looked at the Mac Pro, I shared it with you guys. And that's something that I want to say globally about the channel. I do so many videos that anything I do tech-wise, pretty much, I share with you guys. And something as big as taking a look at the Mac Pro, I'm never going to leave you in the dark. So no, nobody panic if there's a delay in any kind of project or whatever. I am taking you guys um, through every single step. But something you've got to remember about the Mac Pro situation was all of this kicked off before Eli, Eli was born and then I didn't have a chance to look at it again and obviously tinkering around with this system was not a priority. But I've got a free week this week. It's quite, you know, loosey-goosey. It's a Wednesday today and I'm going to dedicate the whole day to the final chapter of the Mac Pro. Now what are we going to do? We're going to stick in a hard drive. Yes, a hard drive. We're going to install a fresh OS. We are going to take pictures of the machine. We're going to put, um, run the machine through some tests just to see how stable it is, see what it's doing, document everything that it does. I'm going to write an eBay write-up and by the end of today, this machine will be auctioned on eBay. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get the space. I'm going to get whatever money I get from it and I'm going to keep it in a pot somewhere and it's going to go towards my next Mac desktop. I'm going to try and sell, sell, sell and get a reliable main machine. So. One little apology I'm going to make about this video, I'm using the built-in camera audio so I don't know how it's going to sound. You guys have been used to some improved audio quality in my last sort of five or six videos. But we are going to be a little bit more mobile in this video, we've got to go up to the studio. Um, so I can't really take my audio setup up there, I'm not fully mobile with that yet. But anyway, this is going to be probably quite a long video so strap in, sit back, relax for some classic rambly IMNC goodness. This is hopefully the final Mac Pro chapter the final video in which you see my legendary, absolute tank workhorse of a Mac Pro that's been with me since January 2011. This thing is to thank for pretty much all of the videos that got me where I am today. So, hope you guys enjoy. Final chapter of the Mac Pro, let's get to it. Ah, we've shifted a little bit. This is not a Mac Pro, this is my Power Mac G5. Let's turn it on, if I can do that like that. So why are we up here? As I told you guys, I need a hard drive for the Mac Pro. Now, the only hard drive that I really want to send the Mac Pro out with is in this machine. In here, I have a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar Blue that was originally bought for my 2011 Phenom 2 gaming PC build. You guys saw me put that in this machine. Um, and yeah, basically I need it now for the Mac Pro. I don't have any other reliable SATA drives to hand. All of the SATA drives that I have are either reserved for backups for my current setup. I've got terabytes and terabytes of green drives and stuff like that. But the only drive that I really want to send out with my Mac Pro is the one in here. Now, you may think, Tom, your studio will be out of action. No G5. What the hell, man? Well, the G5 is also going, I'm afraid. Um, that is the end of an era for this Mac as well. It is going to someone that you guys all know very well. I'm not going to announce who just in case he doesn't want me to uh, say anything and he wants to keep it as a surprise. Um, but I am going to send it to him without a hard drive so whatever he thinks of that I'm sure he's got a hard drive for it. Um, but it's only for the price of shipping really anyway so uh, that's all well and good. Um, but the reason I've booted it up is because I have files on here that I need. So I have brought with me my Western Digital My Passport 750 gig to back up some files. There's only about 20 gigs worth of files on here that I need. Now, one really, really annoying thing is this system is running Logic Pro 8, and I am in fact halfway through composing a song, not just any song, but an awesome song on this machine. The reason it's awesome is because I am composing my own IMNC theme tune to be used around the place. As you guys know, I use various different songs at the moment, but I want to start composing nearly all of the music that you hear on the channel. And that started with the IMNC theme tune, um, which I am very proud of. But it's nowhere near finished, and I'm running it in Logic Pro 8. I do not have another Logic Pro 8 box, so what I'm going to do is quick bounce it in whatever state it's in at the moment, um, but it won't be usable, it's not mixed, it's not even finished, it's only two minutes worth. Um, I wanted to make it at least four minutes in length just so it's usable. Um, 
and yeah what I'm gonna have to do is try and set up another Logic 8 machine down the road um, to use it. I might put Logic 8 on one of my Mac Minis or something temporarily just so I can finish off the song but it's all well and good because the G5 is is hit to the max with the amount of plugins that I have with that track anyway. Um, plus the studio is in no fit shape to record because I'm not sure if I told you guys but I've sold my primary audio interface and I've also stolen a few other things from the rack so it's looking fairly empty. Now as you can see if I move the camera up here the G5 is booted up so I'm gonna save my files. So I've got all my files on my drive that I want. It's time to shut the G5 down for the last time uh, for me. So end of an era, last PowerPC Mac that I'm sort of using for anything vaguely productive is uh, leaving my life really. So let's take a highly professional camera angle look into the uh, relatively mashed up G5 and opening the latch would help. Oh crap. Put that back up. There it is. And it does look like an uber cool um, 2005, you know, quad model or something, but it's not. It's just a single shrunk down motherboard, 1.8 gigahertz model. So I want the hard drive, basically. <laughs> I do feel sorry for uh, the next person that's getting this after me, but I'm sure he won't mind, given the circumstances. I want this drive. Um, so let's see if I can remember how to remove it. And naturally, you probably, at this moment in time, can't see a single thing, but that's cool. That is what it's all about. I've got it, folks. Very easy to do drives on these systems. There it is. 500 gig, um, caviar blue. Do I have a screwdriver up here? That is the question. Guaranteed I don't and these are too tight to do by hand. So let me go and get a screwdriver. For those of you who have never seen the original unboxing I did of the G5 with James, um, I highly recommend you go and check it out. It's about an hour long and it's one heck of a good laugh. It's sort of what I would consider one of the last PowerPC at its finest videos I was doing. You know, I, I bought this Mac with the full intention of using it for something that actually really mattered at the time and um, James was there helping me and it, and the whole video just had a really good vibe about it. It's definitely in my top 10 favorite videos I've ever done. Um, so if you've never seen it, go and check it out. It's, uh, it's a wild one. And I had a dodgy arm when we were filming it, so it's pretty crazy. Now, for the next owner, I obviously want them to have these drive screws um, because when I got the machine, it, had, it only had one set of these, but the cool thing about the G5 is you can screw them into this panel here um, and there should be four in here already to add the second drive but there's not but it's not a massive disaster you can find them on ebay but i just yeah i wouldn't want the next owner not to have them because that means the difference between being able to safely install a drive and not safely install a drive so that is that so one cool thing about Macs, I've said it before and I'll say it again, they always provide all of the screws that you need for the upgrades somewhere inside the system uh, MDDs include all the screws you need to install a second optical drive and an additional three hard drives, um, which is fantastic. Um, and the G5, uh, the Mac Pro includes all the screws you need to install the second optical drive hidden away there. And as you can see, I'm demonstrating the G5 right now, just screwing these in. So that is the system fully unplugged. Um, this is nowhere near good enough for a Hackintosh case, guys. Check this out, it's absolutely mangled. Um, so if anyone did want to buy this off of me for a Hackintosh case, then it's not going to happen. That's so one of the reasons why I'm giving it away is because it's so mangled. Um, if it was a decent spec G5, like a something like a dual 2.3 or up, then you know I'd actually try and flog it. But it's currently not worth it, and it's a nightmare trying to get the side panel to sit properly as well. Do you know what? We'll close the side panel at a later date. We've got what we came here. For, and that is the hard drive. So my Mac is busy making an El Capitan USB stick that I'm gonna to use to fresh install this Mac. While it's doing that, I may as well put the hard drive in that we will be using. So I currently have in here an SSD, I believe, or I may have stolen it for another project. I lose track so easily. Either way, um, this entire converter, adapter, SSD, doohickey, will be coming out. 
um, because I've been putting a normal three and a half inch drive in there and I can't actually get it out at the moment. So let me unscrew this. Now, that's one thing about my Mac Pro. I do have a few missing drive screws, etc. All faults will be listed in the eBay auction. I'm not gonna, um, you know, try and do a dodgy sale or anything. That's not what I'm about at all. I'm about total honesty and, um, you know, this Mac Pro is a little unwell and I'll try and describe that as best as I can. So let's take a look in here if I can even get into the damn thing. Yeah, it's empty. I've got no drive in this system at the moment. I, I must have stolen it for something else. Um, oh wait, I've stolen it for something I haven't made a video about yet. So yeah, I won't give away too much there. It's nothing exciting actually. So this drive slide only has two screws. Um, the reason I used the two screw one um, for the SSD was because obviously it doesn't matter when you've got an SSD, they don't move, but I'm going to use a sled that actually has more screws. So that is something. Let's pop that on there. I know you can't see much guys, but this is well and truly a process that has been documented to hell and back. Um, but I will move the camera down a little bit. Obviously screw the drive in. Hopefully the USB stick won't take that long to make but it is just a USB 2.0 one and it's not the speediest one on the planet so we're not going to be, uh... oh hang on a sec guys, friggin hell, I need, oh yeah, I really, really need to concentrate more, I'm doing this damn thing backwards, come on Tom, this is basic, basic, basic stuff and if I'm cocking this up I may as well give up right here, so that's better. We now have the drive at least the right way around, which is a good start, of course. There we have it, one drive prepared, and that is absolutely everything that we have to do inside this Mac. Nothing else needs to be done. So let's slide that in, bang. This Mac Pro has not booted off the hard drive for a very long time, so it'll be intriguing to, uh, to install. It'll be a bit of a slower install, but it is what it is. So there is the Mac. I'm going to plug it all in, wait for my USB stick to do its magic, and then we can install the OS. So I'm set up here with my test monitor setup and a keyboard and mouse ready um, to get going. If anyone's wondering why you haven't seen that wireless keyboard and mouse that I've been trying to use, it's just been quite problematic, especially with like OS installs. Um, it was never a good idea to begin with, but I thought it would be nifty. It's okay for any system that's sort of fully up and running and if it's, you know, yeah, whatever. So I've just got DVI and Ethernet coming from the monitor, basically. Um, coming from there, obviously the Ethernet isn't coming from the monitor, but you know what I mean, it's part of that cable that I did. Anyway, I've learned a lot from this test bench setup and the future test bench um, options that I use in my... Uh, new office are going to be far far superior. Anyway, that's nothing to do with this video. If you guys take a look over here, I basically use an application called Disk Maker X to make these OS X USBs. I've used it for the past couple of versions now and it is an absolute godsend. It means that you don't have to touch the terminal. Um, believe it or not, as nerdy and geeky as I am, I don't love going into the terminal um, for various different reasons. If there's an application out there that can do it for me, I prefer that. And, you know, I don't try and act all cool and say, oh yeah, I can go into the terminal and do all these cool things, because I really can't. That's not where my talent lies. My talent lies with looking for the easiest option to do things, basically. Um, so this app takes a little while, and my... Um, um, DMG is also stored on the server, so um, it's got to come through Firewire 400 over the network. Um, Firewire 400 from the, the RAID, that RAID right there, that's why you can hear the noise in the background. Um, but I'm keeping myself entertained by familiarising myself with the specifications of the iMacs that were released yesterday. And uh, just reading a few articles, etc, etc, because part of the reason why I'm shifting this Mac Pro is because I want to make some money and uh, I really, really want to make some money to save up for a new system. So it's good to familiarise yourself with the new systems that are actually available. Anyway, rambling aside, um, hopefully this USB won't take long. It's plugged in right down there, by the way. Okay, everyone, the USB drive is done. It's plugged in. Let's boot up the Mac Pro in three, two, one, go. Now, I've got a feeling that it's going to boot into Leopard, but because it came from a PowerPC Mac, um, I don't know if it will or not, so we'll have to see. Um, obviously because there's no S on this drive, it's come from the G5. Turning the monitor on would help so we can see what's happening. 
and there's an Apple logo. So it's booting into Leopard, which is okay, because we'll load up the USB restart, and we should be good to go from there. Although this Mac does have some troubles booting from USB in its current state. As you can see, that's a fairly speedy boot up. I don't know if it's gonna properly boot up. Um, or what? But not using the SSD and using a hard drive may mean that uh, we are fully, you know, the Mac Pro might actually be fully functional. So if we go to about this Mac, Take a little look. You can see two times two point eight gigahertz quad core Xeon eight gigabytes of eight hundred megahertz DDR two. Damn. So I'm um, taking a look at the pen drive. It will not boot the install OS ten application. Of course, Leopard is far too old. So what we need to do is uh, restart um, directly to the USB drive, which I believe is going to be problematic for us. Yeah, because I don't think the Mac is keen on me holding down Alt at startup. So let's give it a go. We don't want Leopard. We want to. Um, we want to f have a fresh install. So trying to load the boot menu, like I say, it's been giving me issues before. But let's see how how it behaves now. If it comes up with an Apple logo, we know we haven't. Yeah, it hates going into the boot menu. I don't know why. It just doesn't want to do it. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna try a little bit more to boot it from USB uh, off camera. Well guys, I can't stop this Mac from booting up into the drive. It's one of its problems. It hates keyboard shortcuts on startup. So I'm gonna pull the power because also it's not shutting down. Um, and I'm gonna take out the hard drive and I'm gonna stick it in my drive toaster and I am going to erase it on my main setup. Um, so to do that, I'll have to take it back out of the sled, but at least that will allow me to boot up from the USB, because the Mac will boot up from USB when there's no OS on the internal drive. Um, so as long as I can get an OS on here for it to be sent with, I can list all the problems on eBay, and the next person can then do with this machine as they please. I'm not sure what sort of buyer is gonna buy this, um, but I'm not sure what kind of buyer would buy a second-hand seven-year-old Mac Pro anyway. Um, I think anyone that would do that would be a sort of geeky person, so whoever buy, buys this will probably buy it knowing that they have time to troubleshoot it or the knowledge to fix it straight away. Um, but that is the drive out, let's stick it in the toaster. So while we're here, folks, we can play with the absolutely fantastic new... Um, disk utility in uh, Mac OS 10.11, which is obviously sarcasm. It is absolutely horrendous. Here we are in the new disk utility. So what do we have? We have uh, la, 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 la. this one is, of course, Macintosh 500 gig. That is the one. So we are going to go to partition. And can we still do unpartitioned space? How do you do that these days? What the frig is... How do you do unpartitioned space, folks? Does anyone know? What's what's happening? Uh, no? So do we just erase it then? Can we do... Ah, oh, let's just erase it, make it blank. Who cares? Erase it. I was hoping to do, uh, you know, partition, unpartition space, which would be ideal, um, because then the Mac won't try and boot from it at all. Um, but that's fully erased, so obviously my Mac is trying to tell me that it wants to use it as, uh, as a time machine drive. Again, that's my third experience with the new disk utility, and I couldn't do what I wanted for the third time. Um, it's kind of like the disk utility app is nearly there, it's just not there at all at the same time, if that makes any sense. Anyway, let's stick this drive back in. Right then, now we're cooking on gas. Watch this magic, everyone. Let's stick that in there. Close that up. Put the side panel back on. And yes, I'm doing that in the wrong order. Everyone knows why by now. Close that up. Plug in some electricity to the system to give it a fighting chance. Press the power button on the front and 
it should ping up power button yeah there we go I thought the whole thing wasn't working for a second there so we should see the little light on the USB drive blink then we should see the screen come up with something helpful and we should be installing so yeah that's kind of like what I want to happen whether that happens or not is uh, left to be seen because right now we're staring at a grey screen um, but of course only time will tell quite a bit more time than I'd like right now but it's only been a few seconds so I need some patience anything? anything? no? yes? no? yes! an Apple logo, that is excellent folks. So for those of you who don't know, that basically means that this Mac has been forced to boot from the USB because I erased the internal drive. It couldn't find an OS even though it's partitioned for a Mac OS, but there's no OS on it. Thank you, Disk Utility. Anyway, um, we're booting up from the USB drive. The spinny thing will pop up eventually. Um, it's a very slow USB drive, um, but there we go. Hey, hey, it's not the spinny thingy, it's a liney thingy because it's one of these newer OS's. Um, basically this will be a fresh install obviously, very very fresh, but it's from a slow USB drive to a slow hard drive, so it's going to take quite a while. But once we have the OS on the system, I think it's the home stretch. Whatever problems the Mac gives us after that is not my problem. Like I've said probably about three or four times now, I will list the problems and the future owner can deal with them because they will be purchasing the Mac fully, of, fully aware of the issues. And that's if it gives us any issues, it may not, but the not booting from USB thing doesn't bode well, but there we go. It's booting up fairly quickly, so let's see what it does. Well, hey, check this out, guys. Absolutely awesome, awesome camera angle. Not. Let's go. Come on. Use English. Let's go, baby. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to install OS X. Yes, please. And, of course, this... No, I didn't have anything to say after that sentence. Hopefully it won't be too sluggish, guys. The LED on that USB is blinking for its life. Here we go. Let's continue. And we don't really need to go into disk utility because it'll do it all for us. This is the only drive on the system, blah, blah, blah. Untitled, install. And that is it. That is as interesting as it gets. There's the new beach ball, check it out. Um, that is going to sit there installing. It's going to take quite a while um, for the reasons that I chatted about before. So I'm going to go and have some lunch and let this do its thing. If I miss the end of the install, I miss the end of the install because it's not as if there's an exciting intro video for us to catch on camera. Um, but that's that. It says about eight minutes remaining, which is a total and utter lie. Thank you very much, gods of Apple. But it's very, very kind of you to still support the Mac Pro 2008. I think that's a cracking move because the Mac Pro 2008, at least one in a working state, is still one of the best value Macs that you can get today for the bang for the buck price to performance ratio is, uh, is excellent from these machines, including upgradability, of course, storage, uh, PCI, etc. Anyway, rambling. Let's wait for it to install. So everyone, the install has been going for quite a while now, probably about half an hour. Um, and it's, it restarted ages ago into this sort of screen. This appears to be where most of the installation uh, process is happening. I've gone and had lunch and I've also made quite a significant start on the write-up for the Mac Pro, the eBay write-up, while this is installing. So trying to use my time as wisely as I can. It is currently 10 to 3 in the afternoon and I started this project at around midday. So I've got quite a good feeling about this. Also, after a little bit of time to think, um, we may, and I don't know, I'm not 100% sure about this, and it's doubtful, but I haven't really had any issues with the system, apart from the weird USB not working, um, since swapping the drive. So I'm kind of hoping that the system doesn't give me any of those issues and it was the SSD at fault. That way I can mention that on the eBay listing, um, but I'm leaving all of that open because I've got to basically decide what it's doing 
um, based on what it does after I've installed the new OS. So I'm just going to wait for this to install and then hopefully uh, hopefully I can get to it with some t uh, testing, stress testing the system and just you know trying to restart it a couple of times, seeing if anything messes up along the way. So here we are folks, we are installed. Now one thing that a lot of people gave me criticism for when I was prepping this Mac for sale last time uh, was not going through these steps to check the functionality of the machine. Now, if you want my true opinion, um, don't use. If you want my true opinion, it is absolutely fine to reach this stage and then power your Mac down. Uh, that is pretty much how most people send their Macs out. That means that the end user gets a completely fresh machine and fresh operating system and everything is, is uh, good to go. You don't have to type any account names, any of this stuff. It can all be left to the, to the person that buys the system. Um, because you know, how the hell do I know what picture or anything to choose? You know, it's just, it's crazy, but let's have a, let's have a sunflower, why not? But the point I'm making is, um, it was, uh, it was not my fault. Um, how, oh yeah, done. It was not my fault that the machine messed up. It was not the fault of not letting it go to the OS, in my opinion. So, um, I'll just do Mac user and have no password at this moment in time. You have to have a password? Okay, you have to have a password then. Mm. This is exactly why I don't like doing this, but for the sake of this uh, sale, I have to do it because I need to see if this Mac Pro is fully functional. So here we go. Now this is a fresh OS. I wonder if we'll have any issues. The first thing I'm gonna do is dive straight into about this Mac just to check that all the hardware is detected. But I'm not gonna fiddle with any settings. I will let uh, the buyer do all of that. So let's eject the USB drive. We no longer need that. And pull that out and go about this Mac. Okay, that's what we want. So there we have it, 2.2 2 point, uh, two times 2.8 gigahertz quad core Intel Xeon, eight gigs of RAM, uh, Radeon 2600 XT graphics card. Yeah, I took my GT640 out guys, that was just causing even more problems. Um, so that's that. We have the Dell display detected, we have the storage, oh that's untitled, we'll need to rename that. We have all of the RAM detected, and that is that. Okay, so system report. Let's just double check on the ATA bus, we have the optical drive, which is all well and good. Um, we should on this system have Bluetooth as well. There we have it. Bluetooth is right there. We also, what else, what else, what else? We check the graphics, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with all of that, guys. What I'm gonna do right now off camera is restart the machine a couple of times, shut it down, unplug it from power, just do all sorts of different instances with shutting down and booting up and stuff to see how it goes because that's what was giving us the main issues last time. So let's shut down and see what it does. It seems to be, well, pretty, much quite a lot smoother than the last Yosemite install but only time will sell. So I've restarted the system a couple of times and everything seems to be pretty much fine although it's really hard to tell until you actually use it for a, a lengthy period of time. So right now I'm just running a Geekbench 3 test in 64-bit mode. I've had to log into my Apple ID in order to get the application to run because I downloaded it from the App Store. Um, I just copied it across from this machine obviously over the network. Um, so I'm going to have to make sure that I reverse all of this before I send it out. I don't want any trace of my Apple ID or anything at all on this system. So the test is nearly done and obviously, you know, running a Geekbench test isn't the most stressful thing you can put your system through, but it gives you a starting point because it's a benchmark um, and we should see a score for a 2008 Mac Pro around 7,500 uh, on the multi-core score. So, yeah, maybe 8,000 at a push, it really depends. These systems are, are quite up and down, but um, if it gets that, then we know that the system is actually performing well, um, so the performance isn't affected at least. But like I say, I haven't had any issues, no random freezes, no random shutdowns, no refusals to restart or shut down. So all of the symptoms it was having before has pretty much gone. Um, so I think initially when this problem uh, arised, it got me all panicked and stuff, but I don't think there's anything drastically wrong with this machine, really. Um, it's hard to say, though. You know, I'm not I'm not capable of providing a, a proper 
uh, diagnosis for this machine. But here we go, nearly done. I've managed to waffle my way through at least half of the test, so we may as well continue until we get the score up on the same clip. If it's going to give us a score, that is. Come on, come on. We haven't frozen, have we? No. Still, uh, still up and running. 10,847. Fantastic, fantastic result on the multi-core score. Um, apologies, guys. I, I, yeah, this does normally get around 10,000. I don't know what machine I was thinking of. Whether I was thinking of, I actually don't know what I was thinking of. That is a really good result. Um, so I'm going to screenshot that right now. Um, actually, I won't do it like that because it'll look harder to believe. I'll do it with the specifications in the background so at least then we know. Um, so yeah, I'm going to prepare a few screenshots for eBay um, on this system. So I've just finished taking photos of my system here um, outside my door because it's a less cluttered background than um, any surfaces in here basically. And the listing is pretty much done. I just need to upload the photos. This has been a vaguely slow process, but um, it is currently nearly 20 to 4, so not bad. Four hours to troubleshoot and list, well, reinstalling OS and list this thing. Um, while getting other things done in between is, is not too bad, I guess. I'm really hoping that this does get me, you know, a decent little wedge of money, possibly, but. I'm going to be as honest as I can in the item write-up. So there it is, folks. It goes live tonight. By the time you see this video, this Mac Pro will have been listed on eBay for about a day, just over a day. Pictures-wise, I've included machine from all angles, as well as screenshots and the benchmarks next to the About This Mac. Um, pretty much everything you'd want. In terms of write-up, um, I've started off by a general description of the machine, also mentioning the channel. Full list of specifications. The green section is known faults, described in as much detail as I can without being boring. And then all of the all of this is basically terms and conditions. And yeah, that's about that. All really important stuff. Um, listed for £99, no reserve, £17 to post it, but you're welcome to collect it from me. Um, I would love this to double. I would love to be able to walk away from this sale with 200 quid in my back pocket towards my next system, that would be ideal. I paid 1,400 pounds for this uh, nearly five years ago and I would love to get at least some of that back, but I am aware that the system may be a bit sketchy. Even though it hasn't displayed any faults while running El Capitan, it's only a matter of time. I don't trust it at the moment and uh, I don't think anyone else should either, so the buyer for this should really be a competent Mac person. So there she is. Um, it's a shame that it had to end like this. The Mac Pro 2008 resorted to being part of a pile of junk in the corner of my room. Um, but rest assured that I will never ever forget what this Mac has done for me. It's been with me for such a long time and done pretty much everything for me in the last almost five years now. So. I do have a very, very special bond with it, but that's purely now a bond with the memory. I'm fully happy to let the system go. Uh, I don't need it anymore. I have moved on, and the system itself has moved on. It's decided that it's not going to be as reliable as it was, so that's okay. That's fully okay by me. I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone for watching. This is farewell to the Mac Pro 2008 for the last time. This is the final Mac Pro 3.1 chapter. Whether I'll own one again in the future, who the heck knows, but for now, I'm done with them. So, that has been good. It's been a journey and a half, and it's been one hell of a fantastic system to own. So, thank you very much for watching everyone, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.